This is from Scanner Master Corporation. This total package is probably almost three feet long, and it's a disc cone style antenna. I'm not sure if this is their internal code number or if this is the code for the antenna. So the, the entire thing cost $63.20. So I guess it's a T601 made by these people, Transcell. You got some rods. Let's see how many are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight rods that are threaded, maybe 832 with nuts at one end, and I have safety bumpers, little removable rubber tips at the other end. So we've got eight of these things. And it looks like we have eight of these rods. Same thing, not quite as many threads, rubber bumpers at one end. And they measure about 11 and a half inches overall length. Then we have this very nicely made chunk of aluminum. I guess this is steel and steel. two set screws here and this inside diameter measures 35 34 millimeters 35 point 30 or 1.38 inches so these will form the top hat of the uh, antenna. Let's screw in like that. You get the idea? It will go the whole way around. And this will end up with uh, eight of these, giving a total the overall diameter of 23 inches. Then these 33 inch long, very long, will end up going here. Okay, you have to run the nut the whole way out to the end, almost. And then you screw it down. Loosen the nut and go ahead and tighten it up. And 
Now, once these are all in, we'll take an open end wrench and, and tighten these nuts up. But here I have it uh, with the top hat there, and you can see the radial that forms the skirt. So I'm not going to assemble the whole thing, but you get the idea. I think the intent is, of course, to mount this on the pipe and run the coaxial cable down the pipe, which means this exits somewhere along the length of the pipe. A lot of my antennas, the pipe goes clear to the footer. So I'm going to either have to end it shy of the footer or cut a hole in the side of it. This is the disc cone antenna mounted on top of a mast. The stainless steel boss on the bottom of the antenna tightens to a one inch Schedule 40 pipe. In my case I used PVC. There's a couple of set screws there. And that one inch pipe is five foot long. And it goes down to a one by one and and a half inch uh, reducer that's connected to a 10 foot long piece of inch and a half schedule 40 PVC and is fastened to a 2 by 4 on the railing so that's what we've got it's it's mounted on a deck about nine feet above grade. It's got ten foot of plastic pipe, an uh, inch and a half, and then five more feet of one inch pipe. So it's up there a nice distance. Here's the Nano VNA hooked to the Discone antenna. Uh, 50 to 1 gig. This is a Smith chart and yellow is SWR. You see at 50 megahertz the SWR is 3.7. We'll move down to the lowest part here. Now the SWR is 1 to 1.1. 1. 1. 1 to 1.2 at a frequency of uh, 126. Go to the next little dip. SWR of 1.2 at 145 megahertz. So that's a good uh, two meter area in there. The SWR is acceptable. We'll go up to 440. So the SWR is on a peak right now. It's going down at 460. So that would be the uh, 70 centimeter band. And then you know, it just gets better. Now, let me recalibrate and reset the span. So I've rescaled it and calibrated it from uh, 120 to 500 megahertz. And you can see the things centered around 50 ohms. Almost perfectly. That's at 500 megahertz. See how it just bounces around there? I went past 440. So 
So again, we're at a little peak in the SWR. I'll go down to 140. So it should be a pretty nice little antenna, even for transmitting it in the 2 meter band. I'll go up to one of these SWR peaks and you see where the 1 goes. See how it moved to the outer edge of the grouping? So the better matched we are. Can't see while well, it's over there. Right now it's here, which is pretty darn close to 50 ohms. So the disco antenna does work well at a wide range of frequencies.